I think you both should get into the psychedelic side of the Beatles. It'll re- really open up your mind. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's okay. <a good> <laughs> Hey, I'm OK Kennedy. I'm an indie artist and songwriter from Atlanta, but I was not allowed to listen to secular music growing up. So, in an effort to save me and my reputation, these are my friends Rachel and Sarah. And on this podcast, we talk about bands and artists I should know, but probably don't. This is The Beatles. Icon. Do you know the Beatles, Kennedy? I mean, I feel like I've definitely heard of the Beatles. I, <laughs> it's the Beatles. It's the Beatles. It's the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't say that I listened to them mm-hmm. a lot, but growing up in middle school, I had a friend who was absolutely obsessed with the Beatles. I mean, had Beatles lunchbox, posters in a room, talked about the Beatles all the time. Um, so I'm acquainted with the Beatles, probably because of her. Like my phase of Elvis, I think I tried to do the same thing with the Beatles. And then that just made me a fake Beatles fan. Mm. Like, I mean, I listen to their music. Does it feel good to get that off your chest? I mean, it's just, it's a fact. It's just a thing. Fake Beatles fan. Rachel is a fake Beatles fan. Go ahead and just post it everywhere. Um, But, so, I wanted so (laughs) Post it everywhere. (laughs) Post it everywhere. Yeah, I wanted so badly, like, for me to have another Elvis phase in middle school. And so I probably tried to do what your friend probably successfully did Mm -hmm. um, and was trying to be, like, a major Beatles fan. But it just never really worked out. Is there Mm -hmm. a reason? I I don't know. It's just they're they're different. They're different from Elvis. I mean, common sense, yes. I, I don't know. I think it was just, like, you need to be a fan of Beatles, Rachel. Like you, you, you have to be. So, I just tried and it didn't. It wasn't successful. Gotcha. So, yeah, I am a Beatles fan. Actually, is it Ringo your favorite drummer? Yes, Ringo Starr is my favorite drummer, hands down. Always has been, and always will be, because he would like the drums in the Beatles is so simple and grounded, but it's so. It's so pocketed that it's just so. It's that. It's that breath. It is. It is that breath. (laughs) It's just, there's something different. Like, there's something different about Ringo. Yeah. Do you know he wasn't the original drummer? Yeah, I do, actually. Like, George, um, George didn't like him very much. But he ma- he made it, and I'm glad that he did. With a name like Ringo, I feel like you're destined for greatness. Ringo Starr. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Ringo that, Starr. That cool name right there, Ringo Starr. That is a name and a half. What that's what I like to say. That's a name meant <laughs> to be famous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, they were formed in Liverpool in 1960. Um, the members are John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Ringo Starr. Um, and it actually started with Lennon and McCartney when they first um, met playing in a what they call a skiffle band, which is a genre of music that includes American folk and country blues and bluegrass. It originated in the U.S., however, in the 50s, it became really popular. So Lennon and McCartney um, started or started playing together, and then that's how they knew each other. Um, and then McCartney was given a guitar sco- solo in the band, However, they said that he had sticky fingers and that's why Harrison was brought in. So then that's how they got their guitarist because McCartney, they were like, "Mm, you're not the best. So we're going to we're going to give it to somebody else. Um, But the name of the band was in flux during that whole like period or or after the whole Skivel band. Then they started forming their own. Right. So their name was in flux um, and they actually played under some different names. A couple of them are monikers, the monikers. I think is how you say it. Monarchs. Mon- and maybe I don't know. I, I'm terrible <laughs> at reading and words, so Michaela may have to put this in there. Or they could have been called, or they also went by Johnny and the Moon Dogs. What a brilliant name! Yep. As well as the Silver Beatles and the Silver Beats. Until finally, they came up with the Beatles, which is actually a combination of the word. Beatles, like the bug, and beats. Yes, I know. John Lennon was a huge pun guy. <laughs> so he coined the Beatles. 
and changed the spelling to imply rhythmic beats rather than the insect. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know beetles were spelled differently than the bug. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not something I paid attention to until I read about it. So don't don't feel bad about that. <laughs> don't feel bad. This is the only beetles I've ever known. You know beetles. You're you're raised in Georgia. Yeah, that's true. But I didn't know it was spelled differently than the beetles. I literally found the beetle Sunday morning on its back and flipped it over. That's true. And you stared. He needed help. He was like, "Is it B E E T then?" Yeah, yeah the bug that's is the bug. B E E, but you know, a rhythmic beat is B E A. The more you know, the more you know. Well, I'm enlightened. So there actually was a fifth member. He's actually quoted as the fifth beetle, Stuart Sutcliffe. I think that's how you say it. Um, and he was actually John Lennon's flatmate. What happened to him? Um, he actually passed away. So um, he's just coined as that. Um, and also the Beatles did actually have trouble trying to find and keep a drummer until they found Ringo Starr. Mm -hmm. So that's really all of my facts currently. Did you know that the Beatles had a really hard time getting signed by a record label? Mm. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. They were rejected four times yeah. by major labels. Can we just say that like all the big people, they get rejected first? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That just means that if something is like roadblocking something, it might be a good thing. It's a good thing. That means you're gonna go somewhere. Because no star made it easy, obviously. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Tell us about the music, man. They in a short way. Yeah, you could just go you on forever. Could, that's what I was about to say. You could, you could say something about every album. I'm not going to because there's just like some heavy hitter Beatles album that needed to happen for music to be what it is now. You had to have the Beatles. The Beatles are a template to mainstream music 1963 they come out with please please me and that like within a few months it was beatlemania like they were immediately famous after that album comes out they were they sounded so different but they still had that like 50s style but it was kind of more i don't know it was different okay it was different did you know that when they first started they actually dressed up as greasers they like wore all leather at instead the very of, like, beginning their instead leather. of their like suits really? and everything. Yeah. Because of that whole fifties era. So, I mean, like they, they, they actually wore that outfit and then finally their manager, Brian S S Ep Epstein Epstein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, was like, I think you should just get regular suits. And so they did. Yeah. And then the whole, um, what is it? Please, 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 please me. Please, mm -hmm. please me. Then they performed that at the Ed Sullivan show. Yeah. That's, that's iconic to me. Like I can still see the black and white, all the suits. And they, don't, they put Ringo on a platform. They don't look like greasers. They don't. No. no don't and also them. they're British. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're polished British dudes with bowl cuts. Yeah. With crazy bowl cuts too. Like nobody had the hair like they did. <laughs> they they were so different. <laughs> and then you got another album comes out in 1963 called With the Beatles. 1964, A Hard Day's Night, which has Can't Buy Me Love on it, which is still kind of like that 50s era thing. They're not doing anything too different. They're just super popular. But then 1964, Beatles for Sale. And then 1965, you have Help, which has the self-titled track help on it which really everybody knows that song when when someone says help i immediately go i need someone to help not just anybody help. yep okay that's just where my brain goes and then you have yesterday which is a beautiful song that song is gorgeous to me and then six, 1965 as well is when they come out with rubber soul which i think is sonically the most creative that they have been in their career at that point. And that's when things started to take a turn. I think this is, that album was the beginning of the evolution, to be completely honest, like how they've evolutionized music itself. And it was like the first album where every song was different, but it all was the same. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like every song was individual, but it all came together as one sonic being. What? We need a Sarah translator sometimes. Somebody help. Comment below. Yeah, comment below. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have 1966, 
uh, Revolver comes out, which has Eleanor Rigby. And um, Fun fact, Michaela has a cat named Eleanor after that song. Yes. I hate that cat. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> hate that Hate that cat. Love the song it's named after. She's okay. Cat's She's evil. okay. Cat's evil. <laughs> she clawed me once for petting her. She licked my hand. She's constantly getting into a fight with Abby. My, my cat, so... Anyways, back to the Beatles. Back to the Beatles. Um, then you have like Revolver, El- Eleanor Rigby, and Yellow Submarine, and that's why they're considered the forefathers of pop, is because they made such a drastic turn after 1965 that things. I mean, they were like the first of their kind, like literally. And then you have um, 1967, Sgt. Pepper and the Lonely Hearts. That's a big one. Mm-hmm, I freaking yep. love this album love this album this that like um lucy in the sky with diamonds is a beautiful song and that song is not about lsd do you want to say about? <laughs> everyone thought it was lsd because lucy in the sky with diamonds yeah is the that thing which i think is a reach it's actually just um i think it was john lennon's one of his kids came home and drew a picture and asked, like, what is this? And they were like, oh, it's Lucy in the sky with diamonds. And then they wrote a song about it. There you go. Can, Can I, I say one thing about Yellow Submarine? Here's, yes. a, here's an anecdote of my childhood. Okay. The very first time I ever heard Yellow Submarine was in elementary school in the cafeteria when they used to play music for all the children to stop talking <laughs> because they didn't want us to choke on our food. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so all like Sorry. that song, that song just reminds me of not being able to talk in the lunchroom. Protecting you from choking. There you go. Well, thank you, Beatles, for Thanks. saving our lives. There you go. <laughs> and that song has a really cool, like it's super reverby in the verses and then really dry in the chorus. And it's also a time signature change from three four to four four from the verse to chorus. Anyways. Really cool, really cool. And at the studio, Michael has a kick drum with the Sgt. Pepper and Lonely Hearts uh, album art on it. Um, for those of you watching and don't know, I record in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, at a studio called Ivy Manor, and the studio owner is Michael, and that is who she is referencing. Yes, Hello, Michael. Is. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. And then you have, um, <laughs> in 1967, the um psychedelic album of the ages that is like smashed between Sgt. Peppers and the Lonely Hearts and the White Album that no one was prepared for that kind of sound. It was extraordinarily it Sounds like different. what you're trying to say is no one was prepared for the Beatles. No. Because after every record you say no one was prepared. No, because they, they weren't. <laughs> no one was prepared. You think about it. They created something completely different. All before the age of 30. They broke up before any of them were 30 years old. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And that was Magical Mystery Tour. And then you have the White Album right after that, which has the infamous Blackbird on it. You know that song? Yes. Do you know how to play that song? Yes. Do you know that song? I do. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. That's a beautiful song. Yeah. And then 1969. No one was prepared for that song. No one was prepared. No one was prepared. Sarah is I will the definition. say it again. Sarah is the definition of a true fan, and I'm a fake fan. You're I'm, just, I'm right in the middle. <laughs> yep, there you go. We are in order. 1969, Yellow Submarine. 1969, Abbey Road, which is the most famous, the most famous album art that I think exists. Everybody knows that. It's just a paved street with four dudes walking across it. But like... You see people recreate that album every day. We went, we recreated that mm-hmm. with my grandmother. Yeah, me and, <laughs> me and Kennedy, we went to London and we, we went to Abbey Roads and we tried to cre- recreate it. And then, That was a miserable yeah. trip. Yeah. Let's not relive it. Yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your brain. <laughs> and that has come together on it. I like that song. Yeah. Yes, that is a good one. First Beatles song I ever heard changed my life and redirected my my brain's chemistry and you were not prepared for it my favorite on that album is oh darling i love that song that's a good song oh darling it's like oldies so it's like okay 
You're just an oldies fan. Oh, yeah. 100%, which is why I'm like half Beatles fan. They and really... not a Joan Jett fan. Yep, nope. Because you just won't give 80s rock and roll a chance. I'm going to die on this hill. It's okay. I think you both should get into the psychedelic side of the Beatles. It'll re- really open up your mind. Okay. Well, <laughs> it took a turn. <laughs> And then, please finish your segment. In 1970, you have Let It Be, uh, also an iconic album. All right. I'm going to move on to some fun facts, because before we all go get into the psychedelic side of the Beatles, after this podcast is finished recording. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Did you guys know that John Lennon used to nap in coffins? Hmm. What the heck? Yeah. Mm. Just going to throw That dude was weird. He napped in coffins. He also took a lot of drugs. Uh, another fact, Bob Dylan introduced the Beatles to marijuana. Speaking of drugs. That doesn't surprise me no, at all. Oh, Bob Dylan. Good old Bob. If it was going to be anybody, Bob Dylan makes sense. Yep. And uh, I thought this fact was funny because of you, Sarah. And you'll know why after I've said it. The Beatles wanted to film their own version of The Lord of the Rings with a more psychedelic feel featuring some of their original songs, but Tolkien refused their offer with no room for negotiation. <laughs> Sarah's a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so... I am. How do you feel about that? I feel like... I feel like J.R. Like J. Tolkien, like, seriously, cut us off from something that could have been phenomenal. That's a hot take. I feel like... <laughs> He probably safeguarded his art. <laughs> Could you imagine the Beatles starring in their own adaption of Lord of the Rings film? No. No, with their own songs <gasps> and make the whole attack. thing more psychedelic. No. No, that would have been awful. They were terrible actors. <laughs> and they're, a mus- they're musicians, too. Those are the only facts I found. Or yeah. I, I looked at There's just a lot about the Beatles. There is. There is a lot. There is so much. And then they did so much with solo stuff, too. Well, John Lennon and Paul McCartney did. Yeah. Yeah. Paul McCartney's knighted by the queen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a sir. So what can I take away from the Beatles, guys? Being evolutionary and being something completely different and separating yourself from everybody and constantly one-upping yourself. And getting a bulk up. Getting a bowl cut, yeah. Please don't do that. Straighten your hair and get a bowl cut. Be that guy. You would literally disown me. I would get a bowl cut with you. You would not. You <laughs> would not. Sarah, if you got a bowl cut, you'd cry me. You'd call me crying. Let's see. And you'd be in your room crying for like days. You wouldn't leave. This is the closest I can get to having Beatles hair. Close. It is close. You look at the 1970 Beatles, it's pretty close. Please don't cut your hair like that. I, I think that's what you should take away from the Beatles. Is don't cut, don't your, hair cut like your hair as a bowl cut. I don't think um, Patty would let me. Patty, no. my hairstylist. You'll look she... like Coconut Head. From Ned's Declassified yeah, School Survival Guide? it'll be bad. Don't yeah. do it. Okay, I won't do it. There you go. <laughs> and don't get assassinated. Okay. That's a good one. It's a good takeaway, I think. Yep. I think that's the best one. I think that's the and best takeaway. don't let Bob Dylan introduce you to drugs. Yes. And don't break up the band over egos. Mm. They couldn't get along. Mm. It was the downfall of the Beatles. I wonder what we missed out on because the Beatles couldn't get over their egos. Yep. Wow. Yep. We may still have the Beatles today. Yesterday. Good one. <laughs> Good is, that all the, is that all the worst, you know? <laughs> Yes, that's a yes. The wheezing laugh is a yes. Fake fan. (laughs) Go ahead, give us a song, Sarah, since you are an actual Beatles fan. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Pick that one. That's such a good one. You could do Come Together. The drums in that song are so here we go it's the rachel sarah adaption <laughs> here come all flat top because we don't know who we are now so now she went hit me la ba ba she did 
Even know the words. One hundred percent exposed. Beatle exposed. Fan. Fake Beatle fan. You are good. Besides the Beatles. You're great. I listen Thank to you. your music all the time. Okay. That's cool. You want to talk about a fake fan? You want to talk about a fake fan? I found out that Rachel Valadez, my friend of 10 years, who goes with me to all my shows, runs the merch table, lets me take her van. She doesn't listen to my music. Fake fan. Me and the Beatles have something in common. We both have Rachel Valadez as a fake fan. Thank you for watching. I'm out of here.